Hey, you beautiful YouTubers. This is Lisa sharing life stories with you. I kind of did something like this a long time ago. Now I have all you beautiful people on here. And this is real important to me. And I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of a backstory. And then I'll tell you what I believe. And then I really would like for you guys... I'm close to an airport. And I just, for some reason... Heard some big ass planes taking off, and you don't hear that too much. They usually come in. I'm, and it's a small airport. It's it's the city airport of Detroit. But anyways, this is this is a little bit of my backstory. When my mom passed away in year 2009, it's coming up to the anniversary, and it makes me get very upset around this time December 18th the day she passed away I really want to go into too much because then I start reliving the whole nightmare again but basically she had a hysterectomy if I'm saying that right operation she, like my dad always says she was supposed to be home three to four days she uh, never made it home she went in and out of like the hospital to an aftercare place supposedly get strong enough and then I'm like almost confused if I can remember if she went there twice or not. I can't even remember. But I know the last time she went to that aftercare place in Mount Clemens. And I, and I go, oh my, you'll like it here. Because the houses, when I looked outside the window, the houses were real old-fashioned looking. And, you know, and I'm like, oh. And I remember her, it was the, amb the ambulance ride. She was real hot because she had a fever. She had an infection. She was burning up inside. The poor little sweet heart. And Andy Griffith's show was on. I'm like, oh, your Andy Griffith show's on. You know, you might like that. And... They said she had osteomyelitis. My mom, how did she get that? She never had anything. My mom never had no surgeries. That was her first and only surgery. And this is what's so fucking weird, okay? I'm swearing because they killed my mother. I should have sued, but I wasn't thinking in the right frame of mind then because I was taking my care of my dad, and I was just devastated by my mother's death my mother wasn't supposed to die we thought she was on the uptick and that's what you hear so many times when people pass away you think they're on the uptick getting better for a couple days and then all of a sudden it happens it happens out of the blue bam they're gone and that's what fucking happens to so many people it happened to my grandpa my jaja you know that's grandpa in polish um <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I, I get really mad when I start talking about my ma and upset because it shouldn't have happened. But my ma kept saying she never wanted this operation. And that's why I'm so fearful of doctors or anything now. She never wanted that operation. She never did. She knew that was going to happen. Right before she died in one of her few moments of coherency, if that's the right word, in the hospital, she goes, I told you this was going to happen to me. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, so anyways, my mom passed away and I could not accept it. I could not accept it. And I read over 200 books. I need to calm down because I get all these bad memories and shit it brings up again. I read over 200 books about life after death. One of my first ones was, he's a wonderful man from Michigan itself, Detroit area, I believe. Mitch Album, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. It was a book that was floating around my mother-in-law's house. It was a book that her mother gave her. And that's so weird that was floating around in the house. She never would read it. She didn't know anything about that. She just She's not a book kind of person, I guess. So that was the first one. And then the second book, and this is when I was working at the nursing home still. And it was 30 Minutes in Heaven, right? It was about a gentleman that got in a really bad car accident and was pronounced dead. And for some reason, 
And this will inspire you guys to go get the book. For some reason, there was a pastor or, a, you know, I guess a pastor, wasn't a priest, but a pastor or a reverend of some kind, like somebody like that, was going by and he said he didn't know why. Something told this man to get out of his car and go pray for this gentleman. And he goes, I didn't know why, but something kept telling me, God, I'm not going to say something. It was God that kept telling him, get out of your car and go pray for him. And the policeman told him, like, he's gone. He's, he's real gruesome. You don't want to go there. They had tarps and stuff all over him. You don't want to go back. I just put really heavy-duty hand cream on. My hands are going to fall off. You don't want to go back there. It's real gruesome. There's, and he put his hand like over him like this and just kept praying for him. After so long, I forget how long and the whole gist of the story. And I need to find my book again. I got a handful of books that really touched my heart that I kept. And uh, he was coming back to life and he screamed. And they called the police officer and they couldn't believe it. Get help, he's alive. He came back to life because his prayers willed him back. And I didn't even know of such a thing then. After I read all these books, I'm thinking like, could have I have prayed hard enough and fought with God and screamed with my mom would have came back? But what if she did then? What if she was an invalid? She was on a, what do you call that? Um, uh like life support the breathing machine thing and I hated that sound of that I never would forget that after she passed away that sound that squeaking thing and you go in a hospital it's just too much my mom lived after the operation for 42 some days yeah well you do the do the math I, 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 I'm gonna count on my fingers you guys got a damn minute you're staying here. You're my people. You're not going anywhere. She had the operation. I never forget anything. October 13th. That should have told you something because that's our number. Everything in my life, good or bad, has happened on the 13th. She also passed away in a room that added up to 13th, and so did my dad. We lived on 13 Mile um, and made my commune on the 13th. Got all my animals, either got them or they died on the 13th. Found 13th the letter 1-3 on a keychain behind my car at my friend's house and I went in the house it wasn't there come back it was there and nobody knew about the number 13 nobody was there that would put something like that under my car that is freaky shit okay all right so anyways October 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 21 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 29 30 31 1 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. That's 30 days already. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Passed away on a Friday morning, December 18th, like 3 o'clock something in the morning. And I'll get to that too. So I thought it was 40 some days. It was. 36 days. That's how old Jesus was when... Oh, Jesus was 33 when he died. I thought he was 36. No, he was 33. And they had, call, they had called me originally. And they weren't telling me. It's like, you know, you need to get here. I didn't know that's what the call was going to be. I was just too... I was in the middle of a sleep. I was too upset right and I'm getting my dad so fucking slow excuse my language but he was old and sickly and crippled and that made me mad at him because I'm trying to focus on my mother dying and I had to pay attention to him and that's horrible way to be that's not a good way to be but I was like I was mad at him because I wanted to focus on her it was a horrible I was just upset and confused that's all that was and I'm sorry, Dad. I love you. I'm so sorry. But it just, I was torn. Always by myself. My husband was good for shit then. So, he has changed so much now. To the better. I swear to God, I'll break his kneecaps like misery. So, anyways, I really don't want to go into it too much. It's making me too upset. So, anyways... 
When we got there, as I'm making this real fast. I don't even want to talk about this part. She was still real warm, and one of her, her eyes were like open, so it was like she was waiting for me. My beautiful mother was waiting for me. My mom was so good to me. She always had my back, and my dad too, but my mom had my back all through life like nobody I ever seen. The kindest, most nicest, best friend you could ever imagine. Such a good woman. Oh my God. People say, oh yeah, I had good parents, but my mom and dad took the fucking cake. I just can't even express to you how f nice and good they were. It's just crazy. So anyways... I'm going to skip all that because I'm getting too emotional and it's not good. So, I'm going to divulge into read those books. So, that the 30 Minutes in Heaven was my second book. Then, I don't know what was my third book. There was some nurses that were hospice nurses and some kind of a book I read. And that was good. And then I rushed into Sylvia Brown. Oh, my God. The best and most book from Sylvia Brown and pretty much from any of those books. Like, The 30 Minutes in Heaven is awesome. Five People You Meet in Heaven is awesome. But that Sylvia Brown, I think something like it's called Something from the Other Side, right? That gives you so much peace. Because you're left here. Oh my God, does that book do you justice as a person left behind grieving? It really, truly helped me, that book. My gosh, if I could recommend that book. And I told my cousin when her husband died, you should be reading this. I'll give it to you, whatever. Oh, whatever. I don't know what why she didn't read it because the book was good, really good. She read a million other books. She should have read that book. And uh, it just it heal, helped heal my soul. Helped, Like I said, my mom loved Christmas and stuff so much that I could not celebrate Christmas till a couple years ago. Started actually, I couldn't hear people sing because it was like somebody tearing me apart inside. I couldn't see people be happy and getting presents and stuff. And it was like somebody stabbing me. It was, it was amount to that torture. And if anybody else goes through that, they're going to know because so many people lose people around Christmas time. And that's just a bad time to lose them. I lost my mother. I lost my dad September 25th and my mother December 18th both in cold season times but yeah you know in the cold fall and winter but yeah um, those books out there read them if you're struggling going through a hard time get any piece of book and knowledge you can get because they comfort your soul they really really do these people are fools over here driving like that they just have not, no sense at all. I'm trying to think. There was another, there's many of books, and I'm, I, I don't know where I put them all. Hmm. If I can find some in the next couple days, I am going to recommend some to you guys because there's some in my mind, and I can't remember the title to them, but bits and parts of those books stand out to me that did my soul good um yeah but that sylvia brown book really good book really really comfort your soul because you, you, i felt guilty i felt like i didn't make it to the hospital in time i felt like i should have did more i should have transferred her to another hospital there was something i could have did more because when my mom went into the hospital she said to me like please she was on antidepressant medicine i had to make sure she got this name brand medicine she was supposed to be taking she didn't want the generics because believe it or not people generics have fillers in them and each different brand has different kinds kind of fillers in them which will make you feel different oh fuck yeah they say oh no 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 they're full of shit they're full of shit 
Because if you notice you take one medicine, a heart medicine or a blood pressure medicine, my back is itching. It'll work different sometimes on you. So why is that? Because of different fillers. Actually, frugal mom, you should ask frugal daddy. I would imagine he made medicines and stuff, I think, when he, he would know, I would imagine. I'm right about what I'm saying because I know. I just know. And my mom swore by that. And she was right. But, uh, yeah, so that's I, I that's how my mom passed away. My dad was just from old age. His body gave out. He wasn't even that old. He was only 75. But my dad lived a real hard life and worked his ass off. At 10 years old, he was putting up fences for a living. Quit school drinking in the bar at 10 years old. My dad was tough, good-looking man. Smart as hell. Dropped out of school, taught himself everything. Very smart. Very, very smart. If you want it in life, you'll get it. With or without school, and I'm not condemning doning anybody quitting school. There's my dad's back scratcher again. But if you want to learn, you can learn. You can you can read and learn. You know what I'm saying? Don't just leave it up to your teachers to learn because they got too many kids in the classroom. You know what I'm saying? Just too much, too much going on. So you can learn outside of school. You're never too old to learn. You should never give up learning. And I heard somebody say that the other day. And I truly believe in that. Because why would we ever be too old to learn? We should have a constant learning thing going on through whole lot, whole, our whole lives. And it feels good to do that. When I find out new things that I don't know about, it makes me happy. I feel that... Oh, I had this glued... I felt that much. Sm I feel that much smarter. Yeah, I had this glued. It worked for a little while, and I gotta glue it again. I thought I seen somebody, and I can't lock these doors. Luckily, I'm not here real late. It's supposed to be at eight o'clock, but my 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 uh, my relief guy. I believe he'll be here right around seven thirty, and I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't. I had to think for a minute. I don't have to go by nobody's houses or anything. And I gave my husband strict warnings to go get cat food. Or he's he's a done. He's dead. He's a done man. <laughs> I need canned cat food and bagged. And bar S bologna. Because then I got to take the... It's got them damp because it's cheap. It's got them plastic around that dumbass bologna. I got to take that off for the cats. I, I heat their bologna up in the microwave. I cut it. And like the bite-sized pieces, and I heat it up for three, four minutes in the microwave. Hey, any way I can warm these cats or make the... You know what? I should give them some chicken noodle soup, too. A lot of times I'll get off brands, and I'll keep it for them. Or broth or whatever. God, that car made a lot of noise. They like it. That's good for them. That soup, it warms their little souls up. My friend had given me, like, enough to make two hamburger patties or... Yeah, two hamburger patties. Well, what I just when I came home yesterday, I, it was raw. I just made it in like little meatballs about that big, and some are loose. And I heated it up for five six minutes till it was completely cooked. But I should have drained the grease, but I didn't. Eh, that won't hurt them. And maybe some of my head stomach issues today because they're not used to it. But you know what? They they smell the hamburger and they're like. They're like, oh, that shit smells good. It was too hot for them to eat. They had to wait till it cooled down. But something warm in their system and the warms their soul. So, yeah, I got to give them new water when I go home. Canned cat food, dry food. Give them that. And then go in and see my family. I need to make, I think, instant mashed potatoes, green beans, and... I'm just looking at a helicopter landing. And um, noodles of some kind. This pork chop thing, I don't even know what you call it. It's chicken gravy and a packet of French onion soup mix. My husband said that's what those people used to make where he lived. So, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be. I hope to God this shit's good. Because, you know, pork chops aren't cheap. And then 
putting two can two jars of chicken gravy and that packet that's not cheap to do none of that no more either so i'm hoping it's good i'm hoping it's not too salty hoping it's not ruined we'll see so but i just wanted to give this this video is to give you some peace in your heart to know there is oh there's something else i'm going to tell you an afterlife i believe in it 120 percent because my whole argument on the whole shit and my deal is and something my mother always said my mother always said the grass is too green and the sky is too blue for there not to be a god that's what my mom always said and what happened to me about yeah, about a week ago. I think I told you guys this. I'm not sure. Um, I took my mother-in-law for a checkup on her broken leg. They said it's really good, healing good, yada, 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 which was great. I'm very happy, very pleased about that. And the doctor, I tested him, would you remember my dad? He said he would never forget my father in a million years because he had a stop in mid-surgery. His hip bone tur turned to complete liquid and the doctor didn't know, the surgeon doctor didn't know what to connect my dad's hip on. He, hit, he connected it out to the pelvic bone with one screw. He said that was very hard to do. Never did nothing like that before and was surprised it worked. It was it was do or die with my dad. So he did and he did well. That doctor saved my father's life. Um yeah, very good doctor. Uh but it was so weird when I like I said when I was talking to that doctor and when I got out of there and I told that doctor something my dad never got a chance to really tell him my dad was not a baby he could endure great pain right and he wanted that doctor to know he was no chicken shit you know my dad was a tough man's man but sensitive and kind too and I'm telling you guys as sure as I'm sitting here when I got all that doctor I didn't even tell nobody this shit. I didn't even get a chance to tell my husband or anybody. My dad's nickname to me was Leela. And I heard that name as clear as fucking day, guys. And I'm sorry for swearing because I'm all wound up. But I heard it as if you were sitting here. And I heard it in my head. And it wasn't me thinking of it because you know what? I've not heard that name in 25 or 30 years that it was ever said to me. But only by my mom and my dad. So why would I think of something like that? Why, why would I have any reason to think of that name? No damn reason. My dad was telling me, good job, Leela. And I'm telling you, I heard that just like that. And I'm like, on freaking believable and I was laughing to myself walking through the parking lot I go I can't believe I know it's my dad came to me and said thank you for telling the doctor that he wasn't forgotten he was remembered and that makes anybody feel good right so yeah that was emotional too oh my god it's been a day I'm still dead tired you guys I worked almost 13 hours today 13 hours yesterday I got a little bit more to go I wonder what time it is because I can't touch this but I'm oh I can touch this though my tablet let's see what it says it's five almost 5 30 5 24 so yeah 5 30 I got two hours exactly because I know by 5 7 30 that guy will be here so 5 30 6 30 7 30 I'm the hell out of here I'm going home making a well I'm making the cat's food first then I'm feeding those heathens making instant mashed potatoes noodles and vegetables and I am going to bed I am putting my nightgown on if my dog wants to come up there with me I mean my ice cream and my milk and I'm laying my big ass down. That's it. I'm done. And whatever's on TV's on, isn't on, whatever. I don't care. And there's stuff I always... I watch YouTube all the time. All the time. I just... Yeah. It's, it's always in my life. It's a great channel. But yeah. Anyways... What are your... Enough of me blah, 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 rattling on. What are your experiences, guys? What... 
after life experiences have you had? Has anybody come back to talk to you? Your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, your aunt, your uncle, your best friend? Let me know. Oh my God, that interests me. And it interests everybody else in this group too. It's very interesting to see after life experiences. It really is. And I truly believe it in a good way. We are, we all came from God. I believe that. And we go back to God. I believe it with my heart and soul. Let me know what you guys think and feel. This is Lisa sharing life stories with you. Like and subscribe my channel because we really are in this shit together. We are. Until we become humble and love one another and be good to one another, we ain't getting nothing done. We ain't going nowhere. We're spinning our oars. We ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. Subscribe to my channel. Don't make me mad. I love you all. Let me know about your stories. Don't say, oh, I don't want to tell nobody. Oh, I'm thinking about... Just do it. I want to know. I want to hear. Have a great day. I love you all. God bless.